Good morning and welcome to the fourth in the series of live events hosted by the science department at Rugby School. Today Dr Joyce will talk through the dissection of a rat. So I'm going to cut up to begin with this all the way up to his chin. If you were, if you watched the last dissection, we had a female, We've got a male this time. You may be able to spot the difference already. So we'll go right up there. And then from there, we'll just cut down into the arms. And this just allows us to get the, the skin out of the way. Um, so we can then do the dissection. This bit's slightly difficult with the camera. I'll do my best. And notice I'm just keeping the tissue under tension at all times. So I'll just spin it round. And work again from that initial incision down. towards the testes. You see rats have disproportionately large testes compared to humans. There's one difference. Okay. So we can cut down there. And it just allows us to get the skin away. So we can see everything in situ. There we go. And then what we'll do, really, it's just a case of um, gently pulling away the skin from these uh, membranes that line the cavities. There we go. Just nail that in, just so we can keep tension on it at all times. At this point, I'm going to turn it round again. And again, pull on this side. Just allow me to expose the organs on the inside. Another nail. Okay, that's not bad. Just a little bit annoying. This is skin's ripped a bit there. I'm just going to put another nail in. Okay, and what we can see now is quite clearly um, the two cavities within um, an. A mammal like this. We have the thoracic cavity at the top. Um, we've got the rib cage, uh, which defines its boundaries. Plus, we'd have the diaphragm sitting beneath this, as we know that's involved in breathing. And then here, this is the abdominal cavity here, and that contains uh, the organs of the digestive system, or most of them, and um, also the organs of the uh, urinary excretory system that we'll also look at. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the um, cardiovascular system. I think what we'll do this time, uh, you can see this here. OK, I'm going to move over to uh, my friend Manly Stanley, uh, my torso. And we can have a look at uh, what it looks like in a human, which will allow us to uh, follow the dissection. All right, so what we're looking at at the moment, we're looking down onto the rat. What we can see is the ribcage protecting the lungs and the heart beneath. 
And what we want to do is try and take this out of one unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut up through the sternum, which will obviously separate the rib cage, and then I'll cut up through here, essentially doing what this model does, which is to allow the rib cage to come off. Okay. Now, in the case of the dissection, the lungs should remain in place, and they'll be held with things called pleural membranes, which lubricate the lungs against the rib cage. What I'll then do is try and take the heart and lungs out in one go by using the trachea. The trachea is a tough, fibrous um, pipe that leads to the lungs. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll cut at the top here and I'll use it to peel away and take hopefully the whole system out. Um, the esophagus will come with it. Okay, because the esophagus is attached to the trachea and the esophagus runs down here to the stomach. All right, uh, and that's part of the digestive system, so that's the bit that we'll talk about in the next time. All right, so first thing cardiovascular system and thoracic cavity. Rib cage quite nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nick into the membranes. I'll use my knife for that. It's got a bit blunt. Okay, so as I say, I'm just cutting up through the sternum all the way up to the top. And then I'll just cut through these membranes, allowing me to expose the organs beneath. Um, so I wonder if you can just make this out, see um, this membrane here? That's not actually a membrane, but that's a muscle, which is the diaphragm. So you can just about make out the boundary there, which is quite nice. Okay, so that's the diaphragm, which contracts and flattens when you breathe in. All right, so we can just cut that away. We might be able to actually get that out, which would be nice. We didn't manage to do that on the last one. So on we go. And what we'll do, I'll just, as I say, one good thing about working with a rat is you can do this with scissors. If you're doing this in a human, uh, you need to have a big old hacksaw to do the ribs. And then we can just work down from here again. And actually, you can really see, that's really quite nice. We can see the diaphragm really quite well now. Just work our way up. Just always trying to be delicate. I don't want to damage the organs below. Okay, and there we have it. We've now exposed oops, the, rib, the, what, the organs within the thoracic cavity quite nicely. So um, that's the heart there, the lungs. That's one of the lobed lungs there. Here's another bit of lung at the top. What we'll do, as I said, we'll now try and find the trachea and work in from there. So I'm going to move to some slightly pointier forceps at this point. Just have to work away and you can hopefully you can now see <clears throat> this tube here hopefully you can see that nicely and that is the trachea and you can see it's it's ribbed it has cartilaginous rings to help it stay open when it's under uh, a pressure which is more negative compared to the atmosphere so what we can do now as i say we can cut that and use that now whoops i've lost it it's a bit elastic you can see we can now use this in fact this is this tube here there's the esophagus behind it okay so in fact what's been quite nice there is we've managed to separate the two now then our next job is to try and as i say get this whole thing out together so i am going to have to cut that and it's just a case of teasing apart from the membranes but also we're going to have a, 
a large blood vessel coming off the heart. So that's the there's the esophagus. You can see that now. Just gonna cut through that. It'll allow us to get this out. I hope. Just working just to tease it away from the oops. Struggling a little bit. The the trachea broke, which has made my life tricky. There we can see that's the aorta largest blood vessel in the body going back over the, from the heart down through the spine feeding the organs with oxygenated blood this is proving difficult because i've lost that blooming trick here hold on i'll grab it by the heart actually okay Okay, and that is the heart and lungs. I'm just going to dip them in some water, which allows us to see them slightly better. So hopefully you can see that now on there. At the moment, just looking a bit like a blob, um, but hopefully we can get them to see them better. So there, hopefully now, you can see two lungs. Okay. So we've got our right lung here, sorry, left lung here, and right lung over here. And this is the heart at the top there. Okay, and this is the, there's the trachea coming down there. Okay. So the function of the cardiovascular system is to deliver oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Heart is the pump, the lungs is where the gas exchange occurs. Now, in a rat, there is a slight difference in the anatomy of the lungs in a rat compared to a human. So in a rat, I'm just gonna move this across so you can see it. Oops. There we have it. In a rat, the lungs are lobed um, and one lung has four lobes. So there's one lung, okay. And then on the other side, Hopefully you can start to see the lungs, the, the, the lobes. There's one lobe there, a little lobe, another one there, uh, and one there. See that? See that little lobe there? So they have four lobes on one and only uh, one lobe on the other. Whereas humans, if I just come back to uh, the, the mannequin, so we can just see all these lungs here. So here, good. The left lung has just two lobes, one, two, and the right lung has three. Okay, so there's a slight difference. Functionally, the lungs are very, very similar, but there's a, that is a slight structural difference between humans and the rat. Okay, that's enough. Let's have a nice close look at the digestive system next. So here we are. The first organ that you see, this big dark organ at the top, is the liver. Now the liver plays a really quite important role in digestion in humans because it produces a substance called bile. Now bile is really important for the digestion of fats because it does something called emulsify it. Emulsifies fats, which means it breaks them into smaller droplets, giving a large surface area for enzymes to go on and digest those fats into monoglycerides and fatty acids. However, rats don't have much fat in their diet at all, and therefore there's no need for them to have a really, uh, to, to have produce much bile at all, and therefore they do not have a gallbladder. So we can remove this and we could look for a gallbladder, but we wouldn't find one um, in the same way that we would for humans. And once I've removed this, I'll show you where that is on uh, the human mannequin. 
Just remove this. I'm trying to remove it as best I can without damaging the, the stomach that we can see here. So the stomach, you can see the esophagus coming into the stomach there, um, and the exit to the stomach is just down here into the small intestines, the top part called the duodenum there. Just work. Again, always just trying to tease it away. I don't want to damage what I'm, what we're trying to look at here. And there we go. That's the liver out. Get rid of that. Okay. So let's have a look. What have we got? So here's the stomach. As I've said, it's been twisted a little bit, but that there is the esophagus. Okay. Remember, we've already cut that. That leads from the stomach, sorry, from the mouth, and passes food down through the thoracic cavity by peristalsis all the way into the stomach. The stomach is a muscular organ that digests the food um, partly through a mechanical digestion by pummeling, pummeling it uh, with its muscular walls. I'm going to try and keep everything attached now as best I can. And what we're going to do is try and go from stomach, which the tube starts at the mouth, all the way through the stomach, all the way down to the anus down here. So first of all, we've got to start cutting away this tissue called the mesentery. So the mesentery is this membranes which hold the intestines to the back wall of the abdominal cavity and are highly vascular. That means they've got lots and lots of, just move it across slightly, lots and lots of blood vessels in them because of course you're absorbing glucose, fatty acids, amino acids from your small intestine which needs to be taken to the rest of the body okay so here we go it's working quite nicely now so there's the stomach at the top and this is all small intestine okay we're probably past the duodenum now it's only a short part and we're into probably gone through the next part called the jejuum and we're now into the ileum which is the largest part of the small intestine the longest part and involved in the absorption of of, of um uh, nutrients. Okay, we're just a bit stuck up here. Let's just try and untangle this a bit. Okay, this is large intestine here. Bringing us down all the way to the anus for digestion. Okay, so we'll just chop that there. And that allows us to see large intestine there, and the small intestine here. Um, let's just try and untangle this a little bit. So you might be wondering, what the hell is this massive thing here? I've not seen that on any models. And what that is is the casum, which uh, we do have, but it's, lot, it's nowhere near as um, developed as it is in a rat. And then again, as you might expect, is an adaptation through their anatomy due to their diet. So they eat lots of grain um, and therefore they need to ferment some of that grain uh, using bacteria. And that's where you find um, lots and lots of aerobic bacteria, ones that require oxygen in the case of doing that job. Now, we don't eat that sort of food, not to the same extent, and therefore we don't need it. Or we don't need it to be so big. OK, so there we go. You can really start to see us um, just move it up. You know, so stomach, small intestine, still small intestine and we, until we hit the casing down here. Let's try and organise this a little bit. Large intestine. Just untangle it. There we go. That's probably good enough. Okay. And as I say, this is the case in which I've already told you about a little bit. Okay. And we'll just see what that looks like in the in the human mannequin as well.
So here we can see the intestines of the human. These are the small intestines, large intestine. You can see the large intestine is much shorter. And when we go back, we'll have a look at that on the rat as well. Um, this is the entrance to the small intestine, okay, from the stomach. At that point, it goes through the small intestines until we reach down here, it comes out of the small intestine and enters the large intestine. At that point here, this is the casein. This little pocket is the casein, which is, as you can see, really quite small in a human. Uh, you know, you wouldn't really notice it, but as you've seen in the rat, it's much, much bigger. And it really marks the boundary between the, uh, the rats, between the small intestine and the large intestine. Okay, so let's just go and have a quick book, look back. One thing, last thing I say is this, this here represents the mesentery, which attaches it to the back of the wall. And I've been cutting through this on both, so we can actually get it all out in one go. Okay, let's go and have a look. So, in terms of time, I think we'll just, I'll just show it to you on the board. Um, there you have small intestine, stomach, small intestine, really, really long. Okay, you can see that there, all the way down through to the casing down here. Okay, and then finally, the large intestine leading to digestion. Okay, let's go back and have a look at what we've got left in ooh. sorry about that what we've got left in the rats so the, the next system that i wanted to show you was the uh, urinary excretory system the urinary excretory system is comprised of the kidneys so you've got two kidneys either side of your spine um, it's comprised of two tubes called the ureter which carry urine created in the kidneys down to the bladder, which we're gonna find somewhere down here. All right, and the kidney's role is, is in sort of layman's terms to clean the blood. Okay, so it filters the blood of toxins uh, that you might be producing through your own metabolism. So that's all the reactions in your cells. And those things that we don't want get um, put into the urine. So again, I think if we just look again at the, uh, the mannequin first, we can see the organization of it and it will give you context for the dissection. Okay, so here we are. We're basically at this point now in our dissection. We've removed all those um, digestive organs, we've removed the uh, cardiovascular organs, and we've exposed the two kidneys. So the kidneys are connected to the cardiovascular system via the renal artery, that's the red one, and the renal vein, which is the blue one. Of course, in a dissection, they're not red and blue, they're both red, so they're more difficult to identify. And these pale tubes here, I think you might be able to see, are the ureter, okay? And they feed down all the way down into the bladder, which is down here. What I'm going to try and do is remove a kidney, it might be both, and try and dissect out this tube, which will, which will show us where the bladder is. Okay, that's, that's the aim for the dissection. Let's go. Right, so here we are. Hopefully you can relate what we've just seen on the uh, model to what we have here. We've got two kidneys either side, and you might be able to now make out, just use my pointer, this little tube here. Okay, that might be the tube, or actually the tube might be in here, I think. Sometimes it's very difficult to see until you actually start the dissection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up the, the kidney on this side and start to tease it away. And I'm expecting the points of resistance to be the blood vessels and the ureter. Let's have a look. Oh, hold on, that's not kidney. Let's go that way. Right, there we go. So there you can see some blood vessels. There's a very clear blood vessel going to the kidney there. And 
Oops. If you can begin to see this white tube coming off, which is the ureter. <laughs> oh, difficult to see on this one. There it is. Very small tube all the way down to the all the way down to the bladder down here. You can see that connection there. Okay. And we can do that on the other side. And there you can see, I hope, the tube there, all the way down to the bladder. The next job then is to try and find the bladder itself. And hey presto, there it is, okay. Um, which is just a small bag, essentially, small muscular bag to hold the urine. Okay, so you can see that you can see the tube from the kidney going all the way down there. So what I'm going to try and do is just cut through there like that. And you can see it's connected to the tube from the kidney. There we go. Hope you can see that quite nicely there. Let me just get the right of the kidney. With its ureter. And there we go. Two kidneys out. Okay, and we've got 10 minutes left. So um, that they're the three major systems that I wanted to take you through. Um, while we're down at this end, you can see the reproductive system of the rat as well. So this is a male with with two testes here. Um, there's not a lot to see uh, on testes when they're dissected unless you look under a microscope where you can see the cells producing the sperm, which is quite interesting. But in a dissection, there isn't a huge amount to see. What I will do now is I will try my best to dissect the head of the, the rat, see if we can see if we can get to the brain. So, the first thing I'm going to do is try and remove the skin from the head. And I'll do this in largely the same way. As I did for the rest of the body. You can see these muscles here. These are for the lower jaws for them to bite. That's why I see they're quite big and strong. It's going to give a nasty bite from a rat. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now remove the head. Which will allow me to work with it closer to me, which is going to be very handy. So, what we can already see, oops, we can already see now is the entrance to the uh, the brain. All right, so this is this here. That's where the spinal cord would go through. Ooh. Okay. And what I'm going to try and do now is just remove, as I say, the skin from the the rat's head which will give us access to the the skull so we can do it in a careful way it'll be slightly delicate here because i don't want the i don't want to crack the skull prematurely So 
I'm being quite delicate. Unfortunately, my scalpel has become a little blunt. OK, so we can see the top of the skull now. And what I'll do is I'll try and cut into the skull and as best I can keep the brain intact. So you can already see underneath, you can see almost through the skull because it's, it's not too thick. These are the two hemispheres of the rat's brain, uh, in which are similar to ours. And then down here, they have two parts of their brain called the olfactory bulbs, which are absolutely massive in compared to the rest of their brain. And the reason for that is because they rely on their sense of smell. So um, I'll just show you the human brain so you know what we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> so here there's the human brain so if you imagine the the rat brain here this is the front near its nose and this is the back near its neck we've exposed the hole to which the spinal cord or the brain stem goes through this is the cerebellum rats also have a cerebellum it's involved in uh, movement uh, in particular things like riding bikes uh, if you ever see rats riding a bike, you'll know they're using that part of their brain. Uh, and then we also have um, the cerebellum, which is the largest part of our brain, and also in the rats. And these, you can really clearly see the two hemispheres. Okay, this is involved in a higher level thought. You know, rats are very intelligent creatures. And then underneath, in the human brain, we have these, which are the olfactory bulbs. Okay, now for us, our sense of smell is not very well developed, and therefore our olfactory bulbs are very small. I'm hoping we can be able to see the rats, which, which will be shown to be much, much larger. Okay, so what we're looking for here in the rat brain, we're looking to try and see if we can see the cerebellum, the cerebrum, and the um, olfactory bulbs. Okay. So as I've said on here, you can see uh, the symmetry of the of the skull here and what I'm going to try and do is cut up through you'd find the cerebellum at the back here Let's see if we can get in again with the rat we're lucky because their bone is fragile Again, I'm trying to be really careful here. So peel away the skull. Okay. Hopefully we'll be able to expose the brain. And you've got lots of membranes around your brain protecting it. The blood brain barrier, a very important one. Okay, it's not too bad. Right, the brain is incredibly delicate. There is one of the hemispheres, and there's the other hemisphere. Okay, so that's the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. That's quite nice. We managed to see the brain in situ quite large in, in a rat compared to its body size. And if we cut back here, we might just be able to make out the cerebellum, let's try. May have just cut through it by mistake there, hold on. So 
think that's as far as I'll go. But you can see the cerebellum here at the back, just in the same way that with the humans have the cerebellum at the back. Okay, and there's this, the cerebrum there. And I'm just going to try and tease these away. And I wonder if you can just about make out. Difficult to see the olfactory uh, bulbs. I think we're going to struggle on that today. Okay, but hopefully, and that's given you an insight into uh, brain structure um, in a rat and how it's similar and different to humans. Okay, I think uh, looking at time, we'll, we'll stop there. I hope you've enjoyed that and it's inspired you to go and find out a little bit more about the anatomy of both humans and other organisms. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. Uh, just uh, in the final minute, uh, I can see that there are a couple of questions already on the discussion board on the right hand side. Does anyone have a question that they want to ask Dr Joyce? OK, so we'll start with Mr Day's question, uh, which is what does it smell like? Um, rule number one of dissections, breathe through your mouth. So I've been trying my best not to breathe through my nose and smell it, but on the other occasion I have, um, it's a difficult smell to describe. Uh, this, the intestines are the ones that smell the worst, uh, and they smell as you might expect intestines would smell. I think is the best way to describe it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, a question from the last event. Where did you get the rat from? Um, so, rats are bred in the UK for experiments and for science. So these are bred rats. Um, so. I wouldn't suggest taking one from the garden or one that you found and dissecting them because it could be infested with all sorts of parasites and diseases, um, which is why um, when you're doing research or teaching, you use lab grown rats. Okay, that's great. I can see we've got no more questions. Right, well, I hope everyone really enjoyed that. If we don't see you, have a good break. And thanks again to Dr. Joyce for running this event for us. Goodbye.